Uh, your uh, lady be with America, your friend Brenda, uh, or your aviation expert, or some say my aviation industry. Uh, you're better than a brothel because I'm saying brothel one or can't. But you have the impact of the coronavirus, especially on the aviation ministry. One more, one more, go play more. You might come back. No, time I didn't tell you to say you know, place running in and out of China until say I'm out for certain places. Ban no. What do we send a ball to Mumbai and how have they been affected? Um, if you can hear me, Brenda, good morning. Good morning, Brenda. Good morning. Can you speak up a little bit, Brenda? Good morning. Hi, how are you guys? Good, good, good. Um, how is the U.S. at the moment? Um, the U.S. is pretty interesting right now. We're, we're facing some restrictions so as to quarantine the virus mm -hmm. and then we're also seeing um we're seeing a lot of breakdowns in um different industries restaurants crews and obviously most notably um the aviation industry mm -hmm. let's zero in into the aviation industry quickly brenda um tell us who is brenda i was trying to do an introduction but i'm sure you can do an extensive introduction of yourself then we take it up from there Oh, yes, absolutely. Well, first and foremost, good morning, Ghana. Um, I'm definitely excited to talk to you guys about the impact of the coronavirus to the aviation community. Um, I am a six-year flight attendant, and I'm also the founder of Crew Connect Aviation First Social Club. What we do is we improve the mental health and well-being of aviation professionals. So. I'll definitely be speaking on behalf of my members and what we're hearing from all the different aviation professionals from different work groups mm. in different airlines. Great. Brenda, how is this coronavirus pandemic affecting uh, the aviation industry, especially those of you who work on the plane, flying back and forth to um, prone areas and living with all this um, affected customers or let's say uh, passengers on board oh yeah so this is something for about um a month and a half we've been dealing with i myself flew over to china twice during the breakdown wow. during the breakout of the epidemic um and one of the things that i realized that all aviation specials especially the frontline employees were experiencing is we we didn't know how to contain the virus. We didn't know how the virus was spreading. So what we were taught to do um, with all airlines is to take precautionary measures, make sure we wear gloves, we wash our hands. The real impact that we're seeing right now mm -hmm. is people, the health risk that's posed to the frontline employees and also the financial impact of the significant cutbacks we're seeing globally with airlines. So right now, the most, the, the most impactful part of the coronavirus on the aviation industry is just the massive cutback. Mm. So you're looking, we can actually look to Asian carriers as a litmus test of what we can expect to see in the future. Asian carriers on the outset, on the outbreak of the coronavirus, essentially had to cut down over 50% of their the yeah. staff. Yeah. So that's the same thing that we're experiencing in the U.S. And that's the same thing that we expect to see in Europe with the growth of the coronavirus. So how this is impacting us, the foremost, with more cutbacks, supply, with less supply, less hours. What people don't realize is um, aviation employees, but hourly employees. So while we have a projection of what we're going to make long term, we still have to clock in those hours hourly. So with fleets being car cars, with planes being cars, with um, government telling people not to gather, what is the airport? A huge gathering. So they're not really encouraging people to be around each other in that capacity. So that naturally is impacting the aviation community really, really, really hard. We're seeing a, a stimulus package actually being sent by the U.S. government to ensure that U.S. airlines do not fail during this period. That's how intense it is because we don't want people traveling. We don't want people going back and forth mm -hmm. because that's how we carry the virus. That's how the virus is able to travel from China 
to the U.S., to the and, and so on and so forth. Mm -hmm. So it's critical, and we understand it's inevitable for us to stop travel, but one of the casualties of war in this entire outbreak are the aviation professionals and the flying police. And then not only that, are we suffering on the financial side, but we're also having to take care of ourselves in a way where we will not be highly sure for bringing the virus home Brenda, because it's because of our interactions with the public. It is surprising to know that... Um, can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. It is surprising to know that the aviation industry, you guys are hourly workers. Uh, one will think you're like a salaried workers, and so once you, the, the, there's a cutback or a cutdown, you guys will still be home and still expect to have your full pay. No, um, most airlines, um, and this is industry standard, most airlines don't pay when you're home. And the mm. reason being because there's no, there's no real way for frontline employees to work from home. Mm. It's not digital. Yeah, it's not. True. It's not spreadsheet. It's literally being there in person and interacting with passengers. Mm. And the thing about that is, is I don't know if single aviation professionals who would prefer to see you fly as regular. We yeah. understand the importance of the impact that's happening to our community. True. Because that's the only way to contain the virus. But yeah, no, there's no way for us to work from home whatsoever. And that's, I think, that's the biggest concern that a lot of aviators are facing right now is unpaid leave. Mm. Well, Brenda, let me, let me end with this. Um, what advice would you give to young and upcoming um, Ladies and gentlemen who would like to work in the aviation industry, specifically being on like on the plane, crew members. Can you repeat the question for me? I was asking what you would say to young and upcoming um, ladies and gentlemen who would aspire to be in your position at the moment, looking at the circumstance. What advice would you give them? Oh yeah, for people who are aspiring to be aviation professionals, I still encourage you to apply. I still encourage you to come through the process. What you think about aviation is aviation is cyclical. What goes up must come down. We never stay down for long because we're so integral to how the world operates. For those of um, for those of you who are interested in becoming a flight student, still go through the process. It's a long process. It's a very difficult process. But don't let what's happening now with an aviation change your mind because this will pass. This is only a season. You, there's a, a multitude of resources out there for aspiring aviators. My, I myself, I have a flight to course if you're interested. I do a coaching to help you through the entire process. But I still, still, still encourage people to apply and get through the process and start now because airlines may be doing hiring freezes now. But as soon as this is over, they're going to be hiring aggressively to handle the influx of flying that will inevitably happen once the coronavirus is contained. Great. Uh, Brenda, you would still advise them to go ahead looking at all that is happening at the moment. Is that not something that they should consider and think twice about? I can't okay. hear you. Well, I was just asking, isn't this a situation, a typical situation for them to think twice about trying to enter into the aviation industry? Yeah, this is something that we've seen just about every 10 to 15 years with an aviation. Now, we've never seen it to this level. Okay. This is actually more intense, and it's especially how it's impacting the U.S. carriers. This is more intense than like 9 11, but yeah. the carriers are obvious. Enough with SARS, with um, now, obviously, um, the coronavirus. Well, Brenda, we would like to. Really natural. We would like to thank you very much. Um, next time when you're in Ghana, we would like to have you in the studio so we can talk more about Crew Connect. Yes, absolutely. It won't be a while because um, Ghana did the right thing. Yeah, the band. I know. <laughs> Take band up. I know. But once the band is lifted, I will be in the studio with you guys. Thank you very much, Brenda. Stay safe out there. Yes, you guys do the same. Have a great day. Uh-huh. Thank you. Brenda Aurelis is the founder of Crew Connect and yeah. also has a lot of experience in the aviation industry. She gave us a bit about the effect of coronavirus on the aviation industry, especially the crew or cabin crew members and the entire industry. We we're hoping to have her sometime soon.